So I am actually not upset about them reprinting reserve list cards. And I think that's what they're doing. Now, we can argue the semantics of it. We can say, you know what? They didn't reprint the cards. They found them. We can argue if that's real or that's realistic. And if they find Urza's, you know, that's right. You know what would be a great set? Urza's Destiny, Urza's Legacy, Urza's Saga. My gosh, imagine pulling a Gaia's Cradle. That would be crazy. But, you know, I think it's coming in the future. Um, remember back then I said, hey, maybe they're going to reprint old boxes and then they had Time Spiral Remastered or whatever they called it. And essentially that was like them combining a whole block into one reprinted box. That's something that would do really well. That's something Amazon is very appreciative of, right? And they drive sales for Amazon, which has a very close partnership with Wizard of the Coast. And it's not just... You know, a lot of times, you know, people say that Rudy has this, these connections and yada yada, but like, you gotta understand Amazon, Walmart, they don't just sell magic cards. They sell everything for Hasbro. They sell their board games, Monopoly, right? Monopoly is still, apparently people are still buying the board game. Uh, they sell their, you know, uh, Power Rangers and their Transformers and every, I mean, when you go to the toy aisle, a lot of those toys, My Little Pony, a lot of that toy aisle is dedicated, self space, if you will, to Hasbro. So the same with Amazon, they sell Transformers and Power Rangers and My Little Ponies, right? So imagine upsetting a organization that just, I mean, I mean, whatever happens, magic is just a tiny, tiny part. Magic is such a tiny, tiny part of what uh, the overall Hasbro wants to sell at Walmart, Target, or even uh, a Amazon, right? So keep that in mind when you discuss, you know, the power of these players, that these Amazon has a lot more power to negotiate with Hasbro than a Rudy Chan does, because again, Rudy Chan doesn't sell all these other brands and lines that probably Hasbro is more worried about than Magic the Gathering, because that's most of their income comes from non-Magic the Gathering. So back to the box breaking culture, um, kind of getting here, you know, I started a channel, it was called New Law Student. It was right before I went to law school. It's when I found out, sometime when I found out I was accepted to law school and before I actually did went to law school, I started a channel to join box breaking uh, with a guy called, uh, He's called Firehand Cards now, but he used to be called a Truth 17. There's a guy, his name was Chad. Uh, there was also Affinity Cards at the time. And these live streams were very interesting. Even back then, I'm talking about 2009. The summer of 2009, when I joined, they were doing live stream breaks, right? And the, the idea was the cards would be broke with you live stream, that you would join a break it would be you and a bunch of people. Maybe it would be even a case break, which I think we're going to experience right now, the collector's edition, right? Unite, Dominaria, United. And it would be a simple concept. It would be an incredibly simple concept is, hey, you no, know, I can't afford to buy a case of this product, but maybe we all can chip in. And, you know, there's, you know, 32 football teams. So we each take a football team. Sometimes you know, they'll combine football teams, but like, again, there's different complicated ways to do it. You can do it by team, you can do it by division, you can do it by name, right? You can do it by serial number. There are a million different ways you can join a box break, right? Uh, pick your team, um, which would again, you know, have different prices for the teams. There are a thousand different ways you can kind of figure out what card you're going to get for your box break. You could even, if there's 10 cards, for like a product like Eminence, you could random the cards, not just by totally random, not even by name or number or anything, you just random the cards so everyone gets a card. You can do draft pick order, where you randomize, oh, now you're the fifth pick, so you wait for the four, first four people to pick, and then you pick the card that you want. Um, there are many, many ways you can do a box break, but the definitely the basis of the box break is it's broken live, the product being broken never leaves the camera and you always have a live chat. 
Um, the thing that Chad used to do was he used to have the baseball, and this was before like copyright strikes and stuff, right? Uh, well, this was before like people like cared about it. I think True Seventeen he had to change his channel because of copyright strikes. Maybe that's the reason. I don't really know. Maybe his branding. Maybe. But I remember like, hey, he's just a dude chilling at his home, and then there's the baseball game in the background. And you could tell because the game is on and then they would do the play by play that, hey, he's breaking this in real time. And that was the key. The key was this product, unlike Rudy Chan, and I'll tell you why no one does it the way Rudy Chan does it for obvious reasons, is not pre-recorded, it's not edited, it's not, you know, it's broken live and whatever happens live, if Chad says, you know, some crazy stuff live, well, it's live. I mean, I mean, there's no taking it back, right? It's a live streaming. So this was the reason I even had a YouTube channel, um, the new law student channel, was because I wanted to join Box Breaks with these two individuals. And they've done everything by the book. They are the OGs, right? Before all the new kids showed up, the backyard breaks and so on. And this is what the product, the Legends product is meant to do. It's to, meant to get people to do, join Box Breaks. Box break culture on whatnot, on live streams, on Twitch is huge. Is huge. You cannot ignore it. You cannot ignore it. But the way that people are doing these box breaks with pre recorded videos, let's imagine Rudy opens a, a, a box with Timmy One. Timmy One open, gets the box. Rudy makes a video. No one even knows when Rudy's making the video, no one knows what's opened. Rudy opens a fa let's say 10 Pendle Havens, right? In that one booster box or collector's box. There was a misprinting era. They put too many different Pendle Havens of Tabernacle into the, into the box by mistake. And uh, now, do you think Rudy publishes that video for Timmy One? The answer is no. He would keep the box and then open a new box the Timmy one wouldn't even know that this box with the Pendle Havens even existed because that was recorded and then deleted. And then the new box would be uploaded as if that was the original box with Timmy and Timmy would not know the difference. That's what these original box breakers, that's what a lot of these shadier box breakers did. You can do your history on sports card box breaking. There were a lot of shady individuals. They would switch out cards. They would, you know, pre-record videos. There was a lot of things that we as a magic community, before we really get into box breaking, need to understand why does the sports community require the box to be on the table at all time? Why does it require chat to be live? Why does it require both cameras to be live? Right? It's because of manipulation. It's because, you know, there, whenever, as soon as the people would take the pack out, there's no reason you would take the pack outside of the vision of one of the cameras. Other than what, and then as soon as it happens, people will assume that you are scamming. Whether or not you are, you know, people will assume that you have scammed that your audience, this audience of people who paid with, paid so much money to break with you. Because there's no reason the product, be it the box or the case or the, even the booster pack, should go off camera. Right? There's no reason, oh, the delivery guy's here. Let me get the delivery. Let me get the pizza guys here. Like, why are you ordering mother effing pizza? We're, we have we have a $26,000 eminence box to break. There's 10 cards. Why don't you show the 10 cards? Do, 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 and get your pizza later. Why are you getting your pizza in card five to six, man? Because maybe you hit something real big and you need to get that card off camera, switch the card to something else, and basically scam the people who paid $26,000, you know, the combined $26,000. So there's a lot of box breakers on, on Magic the Gathering and none of them do this properly. You know, and I guarantee you a lot of them are scamming their people, their box breaking for it. It must be live. You must have two cameras, one on the product at all times, which is the big camera, and then one small camera, which you can see the product in the vision. So you can kind of see the person. You can see like, oh, is there another person in the background? Is there, you can see what's going on, kind of the forest, right? And then the trees is the camera here and it has the live chat has to be live 
you know, Chad used to do something. Again, I thought this was very smart. He used to have the game on. So you could actually turn your game on and it would have the same feed exactly second by second as his would. Right, the same plays, the same double, the same home run. And every so often you'd be like, oh wow, that guy hit a home run. And you could see that the announcement was made when the guy hit the home run on ESPN.com. It was done this way because a lot of scammers did box breaks and they still do box breaks today. No, but the very least, you know they're scamming you like backyard breaks with the Trevor Lawrence gold. Right, at the very least, they can't take the card off camera. They just have to say, oh, well, we're not going to give it away, even though we said we would give it away. So anyway, bye guys.